Okay, we are live. So three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a special episode of In 30. We are here with Mantic 59, and we are going to learn how to shave. So, Mantic, why are you here? Other than why am I here? I'm here to discuss uh, how shaving, which is obviously a pretty random thing for most people, can be turned into a, well, from a kind of a painful, annoying chore into more of a pleasant diversion. You'd be surprised what you can do to make shaving an, an activity you actually look forward to. So, so going to the drugstore and asking the guy to unlock the Gillette Mach <laughs> 5 and plopping down my credit card is going to be fun? No, uh, you certainly can use the Gillette Mach 5 in a traditional wet shave, uh, but there's no reason for it. Uh, if you kind of go old school with even just a single blade, or uh, if you want to, uh, a cartridge razor with fewer blades, and then just use a traditional lather, you can kind of make the best of both worlds if you want to kind of try it out without... Uh, going too far into something unknown. Well, but most I, people do find that after they get into traditional shaving with a single bladed razor, they just don't need the Mach 5s anymore. They uh, would rather spend uh, less than 50 cents on a double-edged blade and a couple dollars on a good shave soap than uh, four dollars per cartridge and some hand goo that smells like your deodorant. I mean, I've I've been I've been double edging since uh, I don't know about April and May, and you're right. I, it's I'm not there yet. I mean, I still I, I tell my wife I'm going upstairs and I have a great time, but I still can't shave every day, and I still have that electric razor as a backup. But I'm getting there, and yeah. and I will say that that the stuff you recommended is. It's a little more expensive, but I'm getting, I'm feeling better about myself. It's a little more expensive up front, but the return on investment for you math guys out there is typically less than a year. And even <laughs> if you go with the uh, the high end stuff, it's less than two years. And then from there, you're you're saving money uh, hand over fist compared with uh, cartridges and canned goo. So I guess let's start. What does someone need to start with? Sure. Well, at its base kind of level, uh, a manual razor, and it can be the Mach 5 if you want, although you certainly don't need it. A lot of people actually start with a two or three blade razor because they're more comfortable with the pivot technology. Uh, in some cases, you'll have to unlearn bad habits when you do go to the double-edged or, or single-edged safety razor. But uh, you can start out, most people did, I certainly did start out with a Mach 3. Uh, and then a shaving cream or shaving soap that lathers, a, a lathering soap or cream, which you can find uh, even at uh, the, the Mega Marts these days for a couple dollars. Vanderhagen is a very common uh, brand. Uh, so let me stop you there. So I went to my local drugstore and I bought the set. I'm holding it up. It's a blue ball. It's it's a terrible brush. Oh, yeah. And uh, the, the Vander Hagen shave soap. And I followed right. your video. I put the what I thought was the appropriate amount of soap and water and I start mixing and mixing and mixing and I'm not getting anywhere. Yeah. So I, so my friend said, no, no, no. no. Go buy the, your other recommendation, the Prorazzo tube and go with that. And I've been much better with that. Yes, those are two very common beginner products. Uh, the Vanderhagen brush is not the best brush in the world. It, it's it's widely available, which is a plus. But uh, there are a lot better brushes out there. They'll cost more than ten dollars. But hey, uh, you can be successful with the Vanderhagen brush. It just takes some uh, extra effort. And in fact, I do have a three-part video that goes into specifically the Vanderhagen premium uh, kit that you have. Basically, you have to wet the brush and then shake it out partly, and then uh, 
moisten the soap that comes with it, and then just have at it with the brush. Just swirl and swirl and swirl and swirl until you get a thick kind of product on the brush bristles, and then from there you build a lather with the product you have on the brush bristles. So it's, it's certainly possible. It does take longer. You won't get as good a quality uh, lather as you may with another brush or another product. But uh, for 10 bucks at the local Mega Mart to at least try something like this, it, it's doable. Now, as you said, the uh, Pro Rasso, which is also fairly widely available, um, is, is a better product and e much easier to make lather with although some people don't really care for the menthol uh, ingredient in it that makes your skin uh, cool. It's a cooling effect, and if I, it's in the middle like of winter, it. you may not like that. No, I, I'm, I'm a pretty good fan about it. Yeah, so I put the Van der Heuvel stuff inside the bowl. I watched your video. It said stir for 90 seconds, so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm – uh, I'm la trying to lather up. 90 seconds go by. So I think I'm doing something wrong. I'm going longer. I'm going like five minutes there. My wife's starting to be like, what are you doing? So then I realized, okay, you know what? I'm probably doing it wrong. And my friends, like I said, my friend said, just stop. Go buy the ProRazzo. And and you know what? I'm having a better time with that. It's a little yeah. more money. Yeah. It's a little more than the whatever, the the, the, the stuff in the can. But like you said, the menthol makes it feel good. I feel like it's all natural. Yeah. And it's, yes. it's, it's, it's making my skin good. I'm, I'm happy with it. And a similar product that may be a little more widely available is if you're in a town big enough for a shopping mall and that shopping mall happens to have a Bath and Body Works, uh, CO Bigelow, which is a brand that you will find in Bath and Body Works, which is, you know, ladies, for the most part, ladies' uh, stuff in there, uh, bathing stuff. Uh, CO Bigelow is almost a clone of uh, Pro Rasso. Very, very close. It's made by Pro Rasso, as a matter of fact. So, and you can usually find them for like $5, a, a tube, for a small tube. Uh, so if you can uh, get a hold of one of those, uh, it might be a little easier than uh, trying to find a Pro Rasso. But of course, hey, we're all tech geeks here. You can just jump on Amazon or whatever. And, and find all sorts of different uh, uh, traditional wet shaving products. Some of them are just outstanding. Plus, there's a lot of artisan uh, products out there, guys in their back rooms making shaving stuff, and a lot of it is, is incredible. So now that I've lathered, I've put everything on my face, the one thing I got from you was you're not hacking, you're not like, you're not hacking with the blade. You're right. trying to take it slow. And right. I think the hardest part for me was the multiple passes. Yes. You know, a lot of people will simply stroke and stroke and stroke and stroke and stroke the same spot in the, in the same way, whether there's lather or not. And you're really trying to reduce the beard in stages for the most comfortable, uh, least irritating shave. And you simply do that with a, a single, slightly overlapping stroke. Don't try to get everything. Uh, and then you go back, relather, and from a different direction, you know, initially you try to want to go with the grain of the hair, and then the, on the second pass, go across the grain of the hair from, from 90 degrees. And uh, you're reducing the stubble in a, in a comfortable, non-irritating way, rather than trying to get it done all at once and getting, you know, razor burn and, and uh nicks and cuts in the process. And that's really uh, a huge problem with the multi-bladed razors is when you try to do that hacking away stuff, it's essentially five blades running on unlathered skin. And yes, there may be some uh, lubrication from the, from the blade cartridge, uh, but it's not enough to prevent uh, irritation by any means. And, and that's where you get the redness and the cuts and the nicks. And I mean, and you're right. So I mean, I did ex I did all the wrong things. I was hacking away. I would get cut usually on the first, like the first when as I changed the blade for the first time. When I got to the second and third shave, I guess of that same blade, it was less cuts, but it wasn't as sharp or wasn't as smooth. And right. I basically gave up for. I mean, 
I would shave with the electric razor, get it all down, and then once a week, <laughs> dread, oh, i got to go do this now, this thing, at 9 o'clock at night for the next day, and just repeat this process. But as I started watching, and even with the, like you said, the cartridge uh, blades, with the right lather and right everything, and following the tips, it was going, it, w it went really well. So yeah. now I'm, I, I'm following up. So my friend gave me the double edge, and if I don't think... It, most of our viewers probably haven't seen it yet. It, it, it looks like, like you said, your grandfather's blade, which, right. which is what it is. And it, it feels pretty sturdy. It's hefty. I feel more of a man using it than the pieces of plastic. But, you, like you said, you got to be careful because you can really take some skin off if you do it wrong. If you do it wrong. I mean, there is a badass aspect to it, without a doubt. I mean, shaving like a grandpa or... Shaving mindfully, not just taking uh, mindless swipes at your face. You need to. There is a learning curve. You need to unlearn some bad habits and and learn some techniques as you've discovered. And uh, as you're doing that, you kind of get into the Zen aspect of shaving, where you're concentrating on what you're doing, and it suddenly becomes more mindful and you're suddenly realizing, hey, I'm getting into the entire experience here, the, the feel of the blade, the smell of the, of the uh, lather, maybe if you've gently warmed the lather, maybe in the, in the winter you've done it in a warm bowl and you get that nice, warm, uh, lathery, uh, wonderful, soft feeling on your face and then you're, uh, you're shaving in a way that's shaving properly, which has largely been forgotten with the last two generations because of the way people do it on TV. And it suddenly becomes something that uh, kind of transcends what you had been doing or what you're trying to do. And you don't mind taking the extra time to learn how to do it properly. And there, there is a learning curve, as you've discovered. It took me several months to get the hang of it really t for a consistent shave, which is why I started uh, making the videos anyway, is to try and help people avoid that long uh, learning curve of not having a father there to tell them what to do and uh, kind of going back into your teens almost in a way to uh, relearn something like that. Well, I had, it, I had it tough. My father had a beard. For the exact reason that there's no reason, what shaving is just too long. I'd rather just trim a beard once a month or whatever it is. Yeah. So I never learned. I was looking at on TV way before. Well, neither did I. I. I shaved with an electric razor for 30 years, and it was never, uh, never something I really thought about a whole lot of zip zip buzz buzz done in a couple of minutes. And then I met the woman who is now my wife. And uh, she just adored the feel of my freshly shaven face. So uh, when an opportunity came up to learn how to keep that freshly shaven face freshly shaven longer, well, she kind of prodded me into it, and uh, that started the whole thing. It's, I mean, you're right. You get a much closer shave. I'm still not convinced that the double edge gives you a closer shave than the cartridge razor. But I think the whole aspect of, of getting the lather going, having this routine after your shower, it's that whole thing. I think you just feel better. Yes. So. Yes. And, and you know, a lot of people uh, agree with you that the, uh, that the, the cartridge razor uh, may be a little more consistent with a shave because of the pivot technology. You know, it's, it, it's a little more, more consistent coverage. And that's fine uh, if you want to pay the cost of the, of the cartridge. There's nothing wrong with that. But you're, uh, as long as you're not putting uh, a lot of artificial goo, uh, a lot of artificial product on your face, which is each ingredient in that is a possibility of, of irritation. And as long as you're using good technique, you know, the reduction technique, even with a cartridge razor, uh, you're, you're going to get better results. Oh, we're halfway now through. So let me ask you, for the, the person who's watching this that says, hmm, I want to take what they say to heart. Obviously, we're going to tell people to watch the videos, and we'll link sure. that down there. And you have and you have it really set up. Watch this first. And they're 10 minutes long, and they're, I want to say that they're comical in the, the sense that 
I've never seen. I've never watched someone shave. I, I mean, right. I, so you go through and you show people, and you have to really understand that you're you're doing a, you're doing a service to the community to show people <laughs> how to shave. And I think the last time I checked, five hundred sixty thousand people have watched this, these videos. So you're not you're doing something right. Actually, but, it's over six hundred thousand now. Oh, okay. yeah. So six hundred thousand, and so now you're so. So you're watching it, and you're like, okay, where do I go? What do I need to buy? So you recommend that someone starts with a cartridge razor first? If, it, it, depending on how much they want to spend. If you want to try and ease into it, uh, get, a, get an inexpensive uh, pivot cartridge, a, a, a two-blade sensor or a three-blade Mach 3. Uh, you certainly don't need the latest and greatest five-blade monstrosity that vibrates like a... Uh, marital aid, <laughs> uh, but uh, if if you want, uh, start with that. Uh, learn how to build a good lather, and I've got those videos too. Uh, and you know, and then after a, a few months or a month or whatever, if you want to try a single blade razor, there are uh, inexpensive versions that work okay. Uh, there are better versions out there that are better built. Uh, I do have a uh, article that I posted on my Sharpologist web website, which I will give you the link to, for uh, recommended uh, uh, razors of different types, uh, adjustable or open tooth comb or uh, value kind of uh, razors that are less expensive. Um, and of course, if you're kind of watching this on a podcast and you're reasonably up on uh, internet purchases, you can go to Amazon or a number of different uh, artisan shaving websites like leesrazors.com or westcoastshaving.com, qedusa.com. There are a, a number of them, and I, in fact, I have uh, some suggestions or recommendations on Sharpologist as well you could look at. Uh, and uh, uh, in the space of, you know, waiting a week for a shipment to arrive, you can get yourself a decent razor, and I, I should say get yourself a variety of blades, because that's a big deal uh, when you're transitioning to a double-edged razor from a cartridge. You're used to buying a particular brand, you know, Gillette or Schick or King of Shaves or whoever, and they're the walled garden. They are the ones that uh, make everything. They've got a single specification, and it's consistent, but uh, it may not be for you. Now, double-edged razor blades, on the other hand, there are tens, maybe hundreds of different brands, and each one of them are made to slightly different specifications, different grindings, different coatings, uh, different bevel settings on the blade edge itself. Uh, and you can actually see that under a uh, scanning electron microscope. So it always pays to get a small variety of uh, blade brands to go along with the razor and give each blade brand a try uh, on a couple shaves. You'll suddenly find out that, oh, this brand is definitely not for me. It's way too sharp or way too dull or doesn't work right. Fine, go on to the next brand. And in the space of you know, a couple of weeks, you'll probably find one or two or three brands that seem to work better for you. So stick to those brands for a while. Uh, get yourself a good, consistent shave. Then maybe revisit uh, brands of blades again and eh, six months, a year down the road, and see if there are any others that can give you a little better results. I mean, I my buddy told me to use uh, the Shark Blades. He actually gave me five and another five recently. But he said those are the best, for me, or for him, those are the best all around. But just right. remember, last week, everyone just dropped $600 on a new iPhone. So, <laughs> so I mean, our audience just did that, and we're, we're discussing new iPads in a week. So we have money. Uh, the, right. the audience has some money. But, but I, I think that it's, yeah, so I think your recommendation is right. Start with a cartridge. Like you said, start with the cartridges, or if you want to buy a double edge, that the razor handles are slightly on the expensive side. So if you're used to paying five dollars per cartridge, the handle is going to be going to set you back twenty, thirty dollars. 
just right. as a just as an FYI. And I think that was my biggest my biggest concern because I was looking at it like, oh, what happens if I don't like it? I just wasted wasted quote unquote thirty dollars for a handle. Then you need a brush, which is another couple dollars, and then and then the brush general. And then you need the stand, and you need the bowl, and you need the shaving <laughs> cream. So, I mean, be ready for, if you're ready to go into it, less than $50. Like, I would say yes. less than $50. Yes, you can do it for less than $50. And and my first initial thing, so I have my Pro Razo pre-shave. I'm holding it up right here. It smells like Noxzema. Because <laughs> it has the menthol. So the first thing I do is I complain to my friend who, uh, who says, get over yourself, is... So now you're just going to switch to Noxzema. And I said, no, this 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 is clearly way stronger. The meth, uh, the menthol in it is, and yes. the eucalyptus is is much stronger. It's better for your face. Yes. But something like this was like eight dollars at least. On and you don't even need to do that. Uh, if you want, go to your local uh, Walgreens or or drugstore, Mega Mart, and just look for a a glycerin based. Sha uh, face show soap, I can say that right. Face soap, uh, you know, a, a product that's made specifically for the face, and, and there are washes and, and bars and things like that. And even just using that will be a big help if you don't want to go the pre-shave uh, specific product. I find there are a couple products that work really well for me. ProRasso is one. Musco Real Glycerin Lime Shave Pre-Soap is, is another one that works re really well for me. Lucky Tiger makes a shave, uh, liquid shave, uh, pardon me, liquid uh, face wash uh, that works really good for a pre-shave. Uh, and like I said, even just a, a plain vanilla facial soap will be better than nothing. And we're looking for organic or we're looking for all natural? You can. I, I mean, generally, the fewer uh, ingredients, the better. Uh, the more natural ingredients or organic ingredients will be better. Uh, but uh, just don't get a body bar or deodorant bar. That's going to strip away too many of the skin oils, uh, and your shave won't be nearly as good. And then, and then you all, we also said you need some sort of shave cream. Yes. You need a shave cream, and. Can you get away from the brush and the bowl? It yes, there are a couple of pretty good brushless shave creams. Uh, a couple that are widely known. Um, uh, Cremo Cream, uh, which is found, uh, beginning to get found much more widely now. It's in a red and white tube. Uh, uh, I've found them in Walgreens, in Target, uh, a few Walmarts. Uh, uh, that's excellent. Uh, you don't need a brush for. Uh, Kiss My Face Moisture Shave, which is found in a lot of, say, grocery store, uh, natural food sections, things like that, natural uh, stores, uh, but a fairly widely available product is actually excellent, uh, and you don't need a brush for it. They work better with a brush, but they are uh, made as brushless products. Uh, if you can't find those, try something from a tube. Uh, stay away from a pressurized can. The the propellant from the from the can, uh, along with a lot of other ingredients, are are terrible for your skin uh, and can react to it. And, and it's best just to shy away from that if you can. And so those are a, a couple suggestions to try. Uh, and then if you want to uh, delve more into it, there are plenty of other products out there. And then when you're done, you need a post-shave solution, which right. which my question to you is I do not have that yet. Okay. Is there – what's a good post-shave solution, or what are you looking for in a in an aftershave? You want to look in an aftershave for something that, that does not have alcohol as the primary ingredient or one of the, one of the first ingredients because that will, uh, over time, dry out your skin too much. Uh, one product that I often recommend that's really widely available uh, in the Mega Marts, in the uh, drugstores, is uh, uh, Nivea for Men Post Shave Balm, uh, the sensitive version. The box will say no dyes or, or fragrance for, from it. Uh, Nivea for Men Sensitive Post Shave Balm. It's really good. It's fairly inexpensive. It's very widely available. 
uh, and a lot of people get uh, really good results from it. Uh, there are certainly other other uh, products out there. You're looking for something that is uh, fairly thin, liquidy, not real, real thick. Um, something that like will will get into your face uh, more easily and uh, again st stay away from the uh, the liquid liquid stuff the watery liquid stuff uh, that is high in alcohol one kind of uh, possibility though for that is just a, a toning uh, witch hazel uh, some people use that as an aftershave reasonably effectively uh, but uh, it's for people that really have uh, very oily skin or live in very hot environments. And, and then after you buy all of this, you're going to need a cabinet to store this in, <laughs> which is the other thing. I mean, it's like I'm looking, be, uh, besides my wife's whole medicine cabinet of uh, a face product, I now need my own little space. So I've been now ostracized to the other bathroom. Yes, where I, I know that feeling very well. So it's it's it is it's it's not an expense. Look at I looked at it this way. It's it is some money. You put it out there. You're getting high quality products, whatever it is, and you're getting a good shave for it. People people will notice. I mean, I did notice that people will. Wait, you shaved today? Well, yeah, yes. I had some time last night. And your 10 minute thing, I've I've gotten it down to about 20 minutes or 15. Mm -hmm. So. That's kind of the the first plateau is you know, it it seems like the first couple will go 45 minutes you're here you're sitting there shaving for 45 minutes then suddenly it'll be 20 and then uh, after a little while then you can get it under 10 it's just a matter of uh, refining your technique and then uh, I I don't know if you've ever talked about it but a septic pencil somebody told yes. me to buy because I do the first couple of times you, you will get cut and it will <laughs> not be pleasant and. This, you stick with it, but buy a septic pencil, and it, I, I never understood. I never knew what it was, and then it looks like it's just constant. It's like a stick form of alcohol. Yeah, kind of. It's it can sting, but it and, uh, it stops the bleeding. And that's always what I want because what do men do? What do us what what are the nerds that we talk about do? They they have to go to some event. Their female part, their their fem their significant other pulls them and says you need to shave. So they shave now. They're all cut up. They're bleeding. Now they have to put on their one white shirt. Yeah. With their one white undershirt and the, and the suit over it with the tie, and then they, they don't realize that they're bleeding, so they come back and their collar is all blood stained, and they're gonna need <laughs> another shirt. I mean, I've been it's not in that, quite that bad now, but <laughs> yes, it, a, a styptic pencil is probably a nice thing to have on hand just in case. I don't want to give the impression that you know this is going to happen every time, and uh, you know you're just going to tear your face up. Uh, you know, but even for me, I get the occasional nick or cut. Yeah, it, it does happen, but uh, it, it's it's the, the benefits outweigh the risks. Uh, and before I go too far, too much further here, I should point out that as far as shaving concern, if you're watching this, yes, I have not shaved uh, for a couple days. So why is the sh this shaving guy uh, have a, a gristly face? Well, it's because uh, I've been uh, sent a uh, a new kind of double-edged uh, razor that is uh, in beta testing right now. There's a Kickstarter for it. This is called the Beluga razor, and it actually pivots like a, uh, a modern cartridge razor, only it takes a double-edged blade. So I just got this yesterday to test uh, as part of the Kickstarter project, crowdfunding project, and uh, I'll be making a video later today of myself shaving with that razor. So uh, I wanted to be sure everybody understand this is, this is a little unusual for me. So... <laughs> I mean, I, I, that was the first thing I mentioned when we first before we started live, saying, "Wait, you're not shaving, but that's a good reason." I, yeah. I want to know how that works because that that's something that is of interest. I mean, I I, I would be interested in like a cartridge-looking replaceable single double-edged razor type thing. So yeah. hopefully, you give it the two thumbs up. And I will uh, I will give you the uh, Kickstarter uh, page on that, so you can uh, put it on your your podcast page. Uh, I'll also have a uh, something about it soon up on my own website, sharpologist.com. 
and uh, you can uh, p perhaps contribute. And if they get enough money, they'll go into production. Well, that's how, that's that's always what we want. Anyway, we're running out of time. Okay. So any so I want to say goodbye. But do you have any last words for our audience? Yeah, a lot of people kind of uh, view this whole niche a little skeptically. Some people say, hey, it's just shaving. Uh, I can get it done in two minutes. Uh, but uh, I would suggest, let me challenge you to it. Let me uh, challenge you to just get an inexpensive set and uh, watch some videos on how to build, lather, and shave properly. And uh, just give it a try. Give it an honest try. And I think you'll be pleased with the results. And uh, Join the fold, and there are websites and forums and uh, videos just for people who uh, are, are into shaving now and how to get a better shave and finding great products. And, and just give it a try, and I think you'll like it. Okay, guys, this has been In 30. Have a good day, and we will see you next time. Bye.